So hello everyone and welcome back. And so what's on tap for today? Well, we're going to be doing a movie review. That's right, folks. It's a movie review of To The End. It's that thriller, that docu-thriller by AOC and her ilk, folks. That's right, four years in the making. Millions of dollars to produce. What did it make at the box office? Millions? Billions? Trillions? Well, folks, we're going to find all that out I'm going to do a reaction video to the movie trailer. And folks, you just got, I hope it doesn't put you to sleep. So I'm going to try my best to make sure that you don't fall asleep watching this movie trailer. All right? So let's get started. But before we do so, if you haven't already done so, this is the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your guest host for today. My name is Dr. Shake. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the um channel here more so than subscribe to that movie and hit that notification bell you know what to do like and share this with everyone so let's folks let's go ahead and see what rotten tomatoes thought of this movie oh here you go 18 reviews 83 percent of rotten tomatoes but look at this here folks the audience score they have more than 100 ratings but they didn't put an audience score up there you know why they didn't do this rotten tomatoes is just as left as everybody else they don't want to be you know what um they don't want to be on the uh, on the receiving end of getting doxxed they don't want to get the receiving end of getting a whole bunch of you know people getting upset with them getting mad at them that these people you know that you know, basically being shunned or, you know, said we're going to take all your advertisers away from you, Rotten Tomatoes. You know, they don't want to have the Rotten Tomatoes being thrown back at them. So they just sort of left a zero. I mean, how pathetic is that? Don't even have the guts. There are a bunch of gutless cowards over there, Rotten Tomatoes. Now, let's see how many millions of dollars this thing made, folks. AOC's climate doc to the end. $80, folks. 80 freaking dollars. Less than $10,000. They open at 120 movie theaters. Folks, $80. When I take the family out to a movie, we spend more than that, folks. Just one family spends $80. These guys made $80 per theater for 120 all right? I mean, you know, that's just four years, folks, four years. You know the only people that got fleeced in this movie? It was the American public, folks. AOC and the people that came in this movie, they made out like bandits. I would love to know how much these people took. Maybe they didn't take any money. Maybe they did it from the goodness of their hearts for the Green New Deal, the GND. I don't know, but let's just see. I'd like to know. I was trying to find that. I couldn't find it in the internet. I'm going to be scouring the internet again, trying to get some information. But I couldn't find a budget. But I know it couldn't have been just in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. This had to be four years? Come on, folks. Come on. Anyways, we're going to get to that clip. Let's go to it right now. And I'm going to do my reaction to it. Fighting for change politically requires faith. No, it doesn't, it doesn't require faith, folks. It doesn't require faith. You know what it requires? Change is the kind of change these guys are talking about. It requires illusion. It requires collusion, and it requires delusion. That's what it does. Yes, you get an army of young people, impressionable young minds, and then you get somebody like Greta Thunberg to start talking and spouting about all that, you know, climate change crapola, and of course, you got young kids saying, of course, sure, I'll join. Sounds fun. But are you going to do anything? We'll talk about that. Are you going to do anything, little boy, little girl? Are you going to do anything to, you know, help achieve climate change? Are you going to get rid of your cell phone? Are you going to get rid of your tablet? Are you going to get rid of your television set? Are you going to get rid of your laptop? How about your car? How about your air conditioning? How about your heating? Are you going to get rid of that? Are you going to get rid of your Coke bottles, plastic bottles? You're going to get rid of all that? No? Well, then don't talk to me. 
We are building an army of young people to stop the climate crisis and create millions of good jobs for our... That's, ex that's what they're doing. They're trying to build up uh, an army of millions of young kids. And they always talk about this, folks, don't they? They always talk about millions and millions of green new jobs. We've been hearing that since the 19 freaking 80s, green new jobs. Where are these millions and millions of green new jobs? Where? They all talk about that. I never see them happening. Yes, there are some that are occurring, but millions upon millions of good green jobs? Not that I see. Our generation. Everyone wants to talk about this dispassionately, but this is the world that I will raise my kids in. The more centrist wing is arguing that they want to maintain the status quo. Ain't no yeah, they want to maintain the status quo because you guys don't have any ideas. You know, getting rid of airplanes in 10 years, getting rid of fossil fuels, trying to get rid of, demolish every single building in every single city across the entire United States. And then what do you guys want to do with that? You want to what? Rebuild those structures all over again with retrofitting for solar and new energy and green energy? So no way. Nobody wants it. Do you know how many trillions of dollars it's going to cost? That's why they want to maintain the status quo, because we know it worked. We can work efficiently with what we already have going. Nobody gonna keep us down. This is going to be the moonshot of our generation. Moment. The moonshot of our generation? You were actually kidding me that we went to the moon? You're going to compare JFK's speech to AOC saying this is the moonshot of our generation? Come on. Moments of crisis. Crack open. And look at this over here, folks. I mean, all this is is some dilapidated, you know, what, junkyard or whatever. What the hell does this have to do with climate change? The window of possibility. We just oh, there it is. Let, let's go back to that. Let's just go back to that. So this is what you're going to do, right? This is what you're going to have to do right here. This? You get a bunch of kids with some flags? Couple of people out in the good old, you know, outdoors or whatever. Yeah, so put on some masks and everything. Have some masks on, whatever, in March. That's what you guys are doing. That's what's going to help the climate change crisis. See, it feels good. You get a bunch of kids that go out for two, three, four hours. You know, get to take some pictures, socialize a little bit. Yeah, 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 we just climb that Sometimes I feel like my job is to get my hands dirty. You're we are your building job an army. is to do the narrative. That's what your job, AC, is to do. Your job is to create the illusion. Your job is to get in bold and get everybody for the collusion. And then everybody spin it around into some kind of Green New Deal delusion. That's your job. Me of young people to stop the climate crisis. We have tens of thousands of new people joining. We just oh, so let's find out who this is first. Okay, let's see, folks. Let's see who Alexandra Rojas is. Alexandra Rojas. Let's see who this girl is. Uh, here we go. Well, let's see. Here she is, an American activist, political commentator. She went to Glastonbury High School, Orange Coast College. She joined Bernie Sanders 2016 campaign as an intern. That's where it occurs, folks. That's where it occurs. After the campaign ended, she became founder of the brand new Congress. Then she was recruited by who? AOC. That's who these people are, folks. These leftist Marxists. Man, when they get out of high school, they're already leftists. They go and they percolate in colleges that are leftist universities with their faculties and everything, and then their brains get basically scrambled, and this is what spits out. Let's go back to the movie. We're in the battle for the soul of the Democratic Party. Make them feel like they're going to lose their seats if they don't support this. Oh, who is this person here? Rihanna Gunn-Wright. Folks, these are not, you know, dumb individuals. These are, these are, smart, intelligent, young women. Can we even say that right now, young women? I don't even know. Maybe I'm misgendering them. If I am, I'm sorry. But 
Let's see who Rihanna Gunn Wright is, folks. Rihanna Gunn Wright. She's a climate director at the Roosevelt Institute. Guess what? She worked with who else? AOC, of course. And she went to Yale, folks. And then after she graduated Yale and she was out there in the, not the real world, her their alternative reality world, she became a Rhodes Scholar at the University of Oxford. You know Oxford? Drink your tea with your pinky extended. Take your little sips. Now, she was raised by mother and grandmother. I guess she had some health challenges early on. Amazing, amazing young woman. No father. Goes on to Yale. Goes on to Oxford. Graduate with honors. She's working all over the place. Inspired by a New Haven Promise Initiative as a way to break the cycle of disadvantage. Well, you know what the way to break the advantage? Why don't you talk to young girls about staying in school? Studying hard like you did. I'm sure you didn't get pregnant. Went on to college or at least high school. Those are the things that they talk about. The Brooking Institute. If you graduate high school, get a good job. Don't get pregnant. Wait till marriage until you're 21 and have a, have a child or whatever. And have a job. You're guaranteed 90% to stay out of poverty. That's how you break the cycle of dis, being, uh, being disadvantaged. Then she joined the Institute of Women's Policy Research. She worked aside a whole bunch of other leftist, you know, lunatics out there. But let's get back to this. As long as there are people that you can poison without consequence, they will all. There you go. Poison people without consequences. There it is, right? We're poisoning them. The oil companies, the gas companies, the energy companies, everybody is being poisoned be a loophole that the fossil fuel industry can oh loophole for the fossil fuel industry yep let's blame it on the fossil fuel industry exploit it's possible to both decarbonize and keep equity and justice at the center no it is not possible to decarbonize and keep equality and justice for all all right that's not that's just in superman comics gun right that's what that is you can't do that. I'm telling you, folks, you go to India, you go to any third world country where there's Exxon decides to have a job or Apple or a car manufacturer, any energy producing company, whatever it is. You, I dare to say that there's going to be protests in India against Apple, against um, any car manufacturing, Tesla or Exxon or Chevron, or Mobile, or any of these guys. Are you kidding me? There's going to be a line miles long with applications in hand to try to get a job. Climate change, they don't care about climate change. The third world country, they need low-cost fuels. They need coal. They need oil. They need natural gas. They don't need batteries, folks. Well, they need batteries, but I mean, that, you know... They need the third world country. They need oil. They need coal. They need all that to survive. Oh, you could probably get rid of all the energy, the coal, natural gas, oil in America and, and in Europe. Sure. We're probably all going to be gone after a little bit. That's for sure. You could do that if we're stupid enough to follow your ideas. But. The third world country, they need that so they can become first world countries like everybody else. Some of us have to actually live the future that you all are setting on fire. We're going to make historic investments and we'll seize the opportunity. We got the candidate that was nominated to come to us. We're either going to go out in a blaze of glory or we're going to win what we want. America has faced threats before and come out. We're either going to go out in a blaze of glory or we're going to win what we want. America I mean, this is what's going to happen, folks. All right. If the Green New Deal, <laughs> if the Green New Deal gets put into place, this is what's going to happen to the United States of America. This is where we're going to be, folks. Back in the Stone Ages, 
That's what they want us to be. They think they're taking us out into the future, into the Jetsons. But we're actually going to be going back to the Flintstones. I mean, what else can you expect, folks? I mean, that's just unbelievable. America has faced threats before and come out. War and come out. Well, that pretty much sums it up, folks. I know I went on a little bit there, but I mean, I just get so passionate about this, as I'm sure you do as well, when they put this crap that's out there. And this movie was really, uh, this was just a trailer, folks, and it was putting people to sleep. And this movie, just take a look. I mean, it was absolutely a bomb, folks. It was just horrific. Just the same old crap that they basically put inside there, wrapped up in some nice CIG elements, and just people talking down to people. And the amount, of the facts in these movies when they brought it forth, I mean, they're not facts, folks. They're just absolutely falsities. And so it just, even among the people that thought that this movie was going to be good, you know, even on the Democrat, the progressive side, even those people, some of them are saying this was bad. So when you are getting hit, when it's happening from the left and the progressives and the moderates, Wow, folks, you know what's going on then. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, watch the video. And you've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show here on, and I happen to be the uh, guest host for today. My name is Dr. Shake, and I'll leave you with my final thoughts as I always do. When you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.